Friends, today is Saturday, June 24, and we have a lot of um, scripture we're going to refer to today because we've been dealing with Luke chapter 15 and looking at the joy that Jesus experiences because he's a risk taker. And he, he, he takes the great risk of associating with, uh, for, for a Messiah candidate, of associating with sinners and prostitutes and tax collectors, other people that are viewed as unholy. Uh, he sees holiness instead as, as connecting with and reorienting the lives of those who are alienated from God. There's a social risk in doing that, and there is a, some practical risks that often take place. And we see within the context of the family story that occupies verses 11 through 32, some of the risks of embracing uh, those who are broken. And this great uh, story is a, a parable of Jesus' whole ministry in many ways. The ministry that God in Christ, the risk that God takes in the, his, his, in the ministry of his son. So let me read these verses from Luke uh, 15. I'm going to read just a few verses, a long set, and then we'll fill in the rest of the story as we go. Jesus said there was a man who had two sons. The younger of them said to his father, Father, give me my inheritance, the share of the wealth that belong, belongs to me that I would get when you die. So he divided this, his assets between them. So this young man went off, and he went, uh, he went from his father, <clears throat> and he went to a, a land that was far away, the, literally the far country. He, he lived with Gentiles. He lost his fortune in loose living. Uh, he was starving because a famine came to that land, and he decided, he said, things could, would, can't get any worse than this here. I might be able to survive if I went back to the family farm and became just a servant. I could never be accepted back into the family, the shame I'd given them, but I... I could perhaps just work on the farm. Um, and so um, the story continues. This young man went off to, to return to his father, but while he was still far away, his father saw him and he was filled with compassion. And he ran, he sprinted, literally, <clears throat> the word means, and he put his arms around his younger son and he kissed him. And the son said to the father, he'd been rehearsing this all the way home, Father, I've sinned against heaven and before you. I'm not worthy to be called your son. And the father said to his slaves, Quickly bring out a robe, the best one, put it on him. Put a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. Get the fatted calf and kill it and let us eat and celebrate. Let us have a party for the village. Um, for this son of mine was dead and is alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. Meanwhile, up on the rest of the farm was the older son, who was now in, in charge of the family property. That's important to know. Uh, in order to give the son his inheritance, the younger son, the father would have had to do something that was usually only done if a father became ill. And in that circumstance, you would fast forward to the point when he would pass on control of his property one-third to his younger son, two-thirds to his older son. The older son would be in charge. In this case, he sells one-third and gives it to the younger son, which he would then wastes in the far country. But he uh, gives over control of everything else to, to, to the older son. And um, yet, when the older son hears that the party is going on and the, the village is gathering, he refuses to go in to the tent where the celebration, the meal is happening. And his father comes out and begins to plead with him. And interestingly, he says uh, to the older son, you know, the older son complains that he's welcomed the younger son back. He's showing this terrible sinner, this awful person who's humiliated the family and wished his father dead and wasted the family inheritance. He's, he's humiliating the family by welcoming him back into the fold. And uh, he complains that he's been never given a party and forgetting that the father's already given him. The father says, everything I have is already yours. Won't you share in the joy of the finding, the finding of someone that we love, a member of our own family, who's come back to his senses and his relationship, and we don't know whether the older son goes in. So this story is a beautiful story. I've told it at some length. Um, God takes risks to recover his children. Uh, the father took a huge risk in liquidating his property and giving it to the younger son. A land sold and wasted would never be recovered. It was a huge risk. He took a huge risk in giving control of, uh, of the rest of his property to the older son. God endows us with gifts and gives us things, and there's a risk in that. Sometimes we waste them, or we 
use them in ways that don't reflect his values. Um, running to, to meet the younger son was a risk. It was actually a death risk. Because if the younger son had got back uh, before the father got there, he would have been stoned to death for shaming his family. I mean, honoring your father and mother was not optional. It was a death offense to, to shame them publicly, as the younger son had done, wishing for his father's death. And so the villagers, if villagers see the son first, they're going to kill him. He's brought shame on the whole village. And so the father runs to embrace him, to protect him from that shame. And he could have also been stoned. There is a, it's a risky act of sacrificial love that we see here. Um, going to plead with the older son is a risk. Another, he, he, he risks humiliation again, going out this time to put himself beneath his older son to plead with him, please come in and join this party, to listen to the older son telling him off like you should never do with an elder person, particularly in a public way. Um, so um, the father is willing to do this because of the value of recovery. The younger son needs to recover from his lostness, his independence, his rebellion. He needs to, uh, once again, uh, become uh, close to his father. He needs to embrace his father's values and accept his father's love and grace. And the older son, too, has been living in pride, a stranger to the father's heart. And the father's willing to take a risk to appeal to him as well, so he, too, can begin, be, can begin to live in a way that's harmonious with God's values. And so he can know the joy of the finding. That was Jesus' appeal to the Pharisees and to us. Let's pray. Lord, we want to engage in your mission, the mission you did on your Father's behalf. It was dangerous and risky in many ways, but there was such joy at the finding. Help us to be willing to welcome rebels home and to wake up those who are entitled sons or daughters so they can know the joy, both of them, when the lost return. And if there's any rebe uh, rebellion or superiority living in us, take it away. We ask in Jesus' name. Amen.